Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. Our guest today is Midori Francis, whose newly released film, Unseen, is now streaming on demand. And you got to check this out. Midori, thank you for being our guest. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Like I said, I love your graphic. I love the blood. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so let's get started. Uh, like, uh, I spoke to your director, Yoko, uh, about a week ago, and she had some great, uh, takes on the film from a director standpoint. I'd love to hear your point of view. And the film starts right off the bat at 60 miles per hour. We see your character, Emily, being held hostage by her ex-boyfriend, Charlie. Now, as an actor starting a film i don't know if it was if it was shot in sequential order or not but does that present a challenge from you as you're trying to build emily's backstory uh starting midpoint and filling in the blanks as we go along yeah i would say not a challenge but definitely an opportunity and some necessary homework you know what what yoko did so well i'm so glad you got to talk to her was really, I think, ground the thriller and the horror nature of this into something, you know, that could actually happen. Yeah. And as she puts it, it is a horrific situation, but it's not, you know, it's not impossible. And she did a great job. We, we talked about this a lot. Like, you know, there are these relationships that you are in and you're in them for a reason and there's love, but there's also a lot of red flags and you don't always listen to them. And I think that this is one of those situations that just escalated. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, so, but, but building in, I don't know if you know, remember, but like when I'm, Emily's waking up and you see that moment where she smiles at Charlie and, and, and you see that there was this relationship there, yeah. you know, yeah. it's not just some crazy rando person. Yeah. Um, yeah. She knows so. this person and yeah. we don't know if that's more terrifying or less terrifying, to be honest. Yeah. Now, as you were reading the script and you were reading about Emily, were there any characteristics of Emily that you found relatable? I think more the circumstances of, you know, I knew that this was going to have to be a fighter, like somebody who is really just tooth and nail, getting in the dirt and ready to fight for their life. And I think I have a lot of energy as a person and um, I'm easily bored. <laughs> and so I think that my natural disposition and like my kind of, you know, my, my, my hunger to do things, I knew it would align well with the circumstance. For example, like, as you said, it goes 60 miles per hour, 90 miles per hour. There's constant running. I love to run. Um, and, and so I knew I would be ready for that to like, you know, sink my teeth into it. In terms of her character, I think Emily, you know, being an ER doctor, being really logical, being, um, you know, Yoko always says that without her eye problem, without her vision problem, she could probably get out of the woods by herself. Yeah. She's calm. She's collected. She knows how to handle these things. And I think that's more Emily than it is me. I think if it was me, I would be freaking out a lot more. I would waste <laughs> a lot of time freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, your co-star is jo Jolene Purdy. Excellent job, uh, Sam. Uh, how would you describe the relationship that, develop that develops between Emily and Sam as this film goes along. Kind of amazing because, you know, Sam is the farthest thing from someone that Emily would think to call. You mm -hmm. know, she's really, a, to her, a random girl who's working at a, as a cashier in Florida. Yeah. Um, and what's so amazing, what I love is, you know those times in life when you meet somebody and you really don't have anything in common, but circumstance brings you together because mm -hmm. you survive something together, you're stuck somewhere together or you know, your mom's friends with someone and you have to talk to somebody and then somehow, somehow you end up being friends. And yeah. I, I love that. That's kind of what I think happens to Emily and Sam. And that's a, that's a big factor of what makes this film so good and relatable uh, to the audience. At least it was for me. Now, Yoko told us that uh, as expected, you and Jolene shot your scene separately, but Jolene flew in to be with you on the set while you did your scenes. I was like, really? Wow, that's great. How did that make you feel? I was so moved, honestly. Like, she did not have to do that. No. And she was out there with me. And I think it made me feel so not alone. Um, because 
you know, it was a lot doing what I was doing every day. And we were shooting fast and it was raining and it was cold and it was like, you know, 15 hours go. And and she was right there just cheering me on. And so I, I think I was in retrospect, like I really appreciate it even more. I know. Um, that was such a great yeah. thing she did. Now, obviously, this is a very physically intensive role. You're in the woods the whole time. Describe the conditions and how did you prepare for them? Well, I got the job in December and I, I filmed in January. So I oh. and it was winter. It was winter in New York. I was in hibernation mode. Honestly, I think as you near December, if you haven't booked a job, you're not really expecting to work right after the holidays. So I was not in my best shape. And so I, I think I spent that month like at the gym. <laughs> doing weights like i i i really just built up my stamina because I, I knew i just knew I, I read the script and i was like yeah i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to be ready for this and when it was done was it even more challenging than you expected it to be actually no okay believe it or not okay. i was you know as an actor i had been doing a lot of great stuff don't get me wrong but a lot of comedy a lot of rom-com i was so ready <laughs> to do something like this i was like leaping out of my bed in the morning i was like yeah get me in there they, there was always this joke because they had these fake um zip ties in the uh -huh. beginning because they didn't want to hurt me but they just kept coming undone <laughs> and i was like i can't this is like the and and then so they jolene and yoko always make fun of me because they would just hear me going tighter can you make them tighter <laughs> Now, as the film progresses, we see a role reversal between Emily and Sam. And Emily feels defeated, wants to give up. Uh, what in your mind was the moment where we see this strong character in Emily want to give up? You know, I think at that point in the movie, um, I would be surprised if anybody was not understanding why she wants yeah. to give up. I mean, geez, like yeah. so much, nine lives. And I think what's beautiful about that moment is Emily starts strong. She's like, you could tell in her eyes, like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. She's not going to win. And at this point, I think it's so cold. She's so wounded. And I think she's so tired. Yeah. And I think that um, after that last fall, I think I think she's just like, I don't I don't think yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I think she feels that she's maybe physically not strong enough to keep running. Absolutely. So you, yeah, and it's beautiful. I love when Sam's character that Jolene does so well when she finally like gets her strength. It's so it's so awesome. That is an amazing scene. Now, yeah. in your opinion, do you think Emily's ambitions in life, becoming an ER doctor, are driven because of the relationship she has with her mother? Yeah, I think for sure. Okay, so her, I mean, does she, does she want to prove something to her mother? And if she does, what, what do you think that is? Um, I think that there's a lot of knowing that her mom has made sacrifices for her. And, and as she says in the movie, wanting to give her a better life. I think that that's all true. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that often, as, as happens in real life, work can distract you from your initial goals, right? Like... Yeah. You become an artist to feel more in touch with the world. Often you'll find yourself like so disconnected and focusing on all the wrong things. And I think similarly, she probably went into this with the best intentions of like making her mom proud. I mean, I think she talks about her mom was also in the ER. So she wants to spend more time with her work harder. And then um, what's sad is at this point, when you find her in the movie, she hasn't really spent a lot of time with her mom and and it's only in realizing that she might never see her again that she has those regrets of like, wow, I really let work kind of take over my life. What really struck me is the moment you're telling Sam that uh, about your mom wanting to take you to Japan. And that is the only thing she has ever asked of you. And you have you can hear the guilt, the regret in your voice that you were not able to fulfill that one thing that your mom asked from you. I thought that was very touching. Were there any characteristics of Emily that you really needed Yoko's help with? Um, I think that there were times when Yoko's understanding of, of the character were really helpful to me. And it was primarily in building this kind of person who, you know, when I was dealing with Jolene as Sam, me and Jolene always joked, like, it was like, come on, Sam, like, you got a lady dying. This isn't the time for your self-doubt, you know, like, <laughs> um, 
But when I would sort of get frustrated as the character, Yoko would remind me like, you know, um, you're playing a character who's really good under crisis and who is methodical and can detach her emotions when she needs to. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you be able to actually coach Sam through her anxiety is you could tell that it's, you know, and so taking that step back and not being as reactive, um, I think that's something Yoko really helped me craft, you know? Very um, nice. Uh, yeah. Now, Emily, it's very well noted. It's part of the synopsis. You're dealing with a very severe nearsighted condition, okay? Yeah. So we see how Yoko portrayed it to the audience, you know, how we see through your eyes. As you were making your way through the woods and you have to show us this condition uh how did you approach that were there any methods advice tell us about that so the the good news is that when i got the script i already was like oh my one of the compelling things to me was that emily couldn't see without her glasses because i without my contacts can't really see very well Same i can't here. drive yeah i could i can't really function in in the, in the way that i need to yeah. so Immediately when I got the script, I was like, this is something I've already been afraid of. I've literally, you know, when they say you're stranded on an island, I've always thought, well, what will I do when my contacts fall out? Like, and so um, I actually, as part of my prep, I took out my contacts and I went outside and I like, I just explored the world in that space. And then I took note of how it felt. Yeah. And, and you do kind of start to see things differently you know it's more about large shapes i noticed you know light is different and you know um so so i did do some research in that way i i was i was my own test subject yeah and that's great because people who don't have a an eye condition like for you and me nearsightedness we feel vulnerable when yeah. our contacts or glasses are out because the world is a big blur and we don't know and it's it's very scary in itself now, this film is a survival thriller, but it goes way deeper than that, dealing with depression, abuse, and, and whatnot. In your opinion, is that what makes this film so good, that it touches on all these different issues? Yeah, I do. I think that it takes it to another level, you know? Um, seeing these two women who are so different, you know, and, and thinking that this is about Emily's life needing to be saved, but learning that Sam's life also really needed to be saved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we think of horror, we do think of the more obvious things like you're, you know, somebody trying to murder you, but we don't think of the horror that can always, you know, depression is a horror and Sam's dealing with horror, you know, she yeah. wants to end her life because of the horror that's going on in her mind, you know? And so I think that that really roots it. Um, and, and the, the, and, and you're right, you know, like the friendship and, and what they lean on each other for, I do think it takes it to another level. And I was excited about that. And I think Yoko just, just hit the nail on the head, you know, how, how do you reconcile or how did you reconcile the fact Emily being such a strong, independent, very smart woman, and yet she gets into an abusive relationship that happens all too often in real life. And then you show the audience that there is a way out. There is a way out if you fight. Uh, how does that make you feel? I mean, and how did you, you know, put those two different character aspects together? Well, you know, I think that we too often associate um, abuse with uh, like uh, so somebody who is the opposite of, you know, strong and, and, and independent and all these things. But the truth is, is that everyone can experience that type of um, unhealthy relationship, that type of violence, that type of, you know, whether it starts in childhood or, you know, it develops later on. And, 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 you know, we don't just, it's not what we just picture in our heads. And mm -hmm. so I actually like that Emily isn't what we've seen um, typically, you know, we're all susceptible to that. Yeah. And, and um, we're all also susceptible to repeating bad relationships or patterns or, we're not seeing things clearly or listening to red flags, you know, it's, it's, it's not everyone, everyone has that fallibility in them to, to sort of be with the wrong person or, or, you know, and, and it's no one's fault. It's just, everyone is, everyone is yeah. susceptible to that. So and you're I, right. I those, those stereotypes of somebody who's in an abusive relationship, just being weak is not accurate. And I'm no. glad that this touches on that. Uh, before I let you go, actors, 
sometimes uh, when they play a character, a character sticks with them, whether it's a small amount or a big amount. They it, they take them with them. With Emily, is there any part of Emily uh, in what you learned in playing Emily that you will carry on into other roles in in your career? Yeah, I think her strength and her confidence. And I've really, really noticed that doing this press, remembering, you know, that experience that a month and a half in, in Louisiana filming gave me as a person so much. I felt, you know, I, I it was such a big task. And the fact that I got to do it and with the support of Yoko and Jolene, I feel I feel more powerful. I feel more capable. Um that's and, awesome. and I think, yeah, I think Emily gave that to me for sure. So that's awesome. Midori, I want yeah. to thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your thoughts. They were truly fascinating. Again, guys, the movie is called Unseen. It is streaming now on your on demand platform of choice. Check this out. This film is so multi layered. We can't put it into just a single sentence. I want to thank our guest, Midori Francis, who is one of the stars of the film. Thank our audience, those of you who are tuning in live and those of you who will be watching later on. On behalf of Midori and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. That was awesome.